Okay, let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship at this time. Um, you should be seeing soon a shared screen, and we will get our hearts and minds ready to worship the Lord this morning. Hey, does, does anybody see the PowerPoint? Not yet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't see it. I don't see it. There it goes. There we go. Um, I can see. Okay, give us just a minute. We're working on how to do this here. <clears throat> So many people on, good morning. It's good to see everybody. Good to know that you're here with us. Give, um, give us just a minute. We're working on um, sharing the screen. There we go, how about that? Give me a thumbs up if you can see that. Okay, you should be able to share, uh, you should be able to see the screen now. <clears throat> so let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Also with you. We gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We acknowledge our need for repentance and for God's mercy. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most holy and merciful God, we confess to you and to one another and before the whole company of heaven that we have sinned by our fault, by our own fault, by our own most grievous fault, in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Have mercy on us, O oh God. We have shut our ears to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us, O oh God. Our past unfaithfulness, the pride, envy, hypocrisy and apathy that have infected our lives we confess to you have mercy on us O god 
our self-indulgent appetites and ways, and our exploitation of other people, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. Our negligence in prayer and worship and our failure to share the faith that is in us, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. Our neglect of human need and suffering and our indifference to injustice and cruelty, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. Our false judgments, our uncharitable thoughts toward our neighbors, and our prejudice and contempt toward those who differ from us, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. Our waste and pollution of your creation and our lack of concern for those who come after us, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. Restore us, O God, and let your anger depart from us. Hear us, O God, for your mercy is great. Accomplish in us, O God, the work of your salvation, that we may show forth your glory in the world. By the cross and passion of your Son, our Savior, bring us with all your saints to the joy of his resurrection. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Bend your ear to our prayers, Lord Christ, and come among us. By your gracious life and death for us, Bring light into the darkness of our hearts and anoint us with your spirit. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading for this fourth Sunday in Lent is from 1 Samuel, the 16th chapter. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you grieve over Saul? I have rejected him for being king over Israel. Fill your horn with oil and set out. I will send you to Jesse, the Bethlehemite, for I have provided for myself a king among his sons. Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hears of it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice. And I will show you what you shall do, and you shall anoint for me the one whom I name to you. Samuel did what the Lord commanded and came to Bethlehem. The elders of the city came to meet him, trembling, and said, Do you come peaceably? He said, Peaceably. I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he, sang, and he sacrificed. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they came, he looked on Elab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is now before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him, for the Lord does not see as mortals see. They look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. He said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shema pass by, and he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel, and Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any of these. Samuel said to Jesse, Are all your sons here? And he said, There remains yet the youngest, but he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and bring him, for he will not sit down until he comes here. He sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and had beautiful eyes and was handsome. The Lord said, Rise and anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. 
And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward. Samuel then set out and went to Ramah. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from Ephesians, the fifth chapter. Once you were darkness, but now in the Lord you are light. Live as children of light. For the fruit of the light is found in all that is good and right and true. Try to find out what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to mention what such, what such people do secretly. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible. For everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Sleeper, awake, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the ninth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus walked along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's works might be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When Jesus had said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with the saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. Then the man went and washed and came back able to see. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar began to ask, Is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some were saying, It is he. Others were saying, No, but it is someone like him. The man kept saying, I am the man. But they kept asking him, then how were your eyes open? He answered, the man called Jesus made mud, spread it on my eyes and said to me, go to Siloam and wash. Then I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, where is he? He said, I do not know. They brought him to the Pharisees, the man who had formerly been blind. Now it was a Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. Then the Pharisees also began to ask him how he received his sight. He said to them, he put mud on my eyes. Then I washed and now I see. But some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God, for he does not observe the Sabbath. But others said, how can a man who is a sinner perform such signs? And they were divided. So they said again to the man blind, What do you say about him? It was your eyes he opened. He said, He is a prophet. The Jews did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight until the day they called the parents of the man who had received his sight and asked them, is this your son who you say was born blind? How then does he now see? His parents answered, We know that this is our son and that he was born blind, but we do not know how it is now he sees, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him. He is of age. He will speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that anyone who confessed Jesus to be the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. Therefore his parents said, He is of age. Ask him. So for a second time they called the man who had been blind, and they said to him, Give glory to God. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered, I do not know whether he is a sinner. One thing I do know, though, that though I was blind, now I see. They said to him, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, 
I have told you already and you would not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciples? Then they reviled him, saying, You are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man, we do not know where he comes from. The man answered, Here is an astonishing thing. You do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to the sinners, but he does listen to one who worships him and obeys his will. Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered him, You were born entirely in sins, and are you trying to teach us? And they drove him out. Jesus heard that they had driven him out, and when he found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, And who is he, sir? Tell me, so that I may believe in him. Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. The man said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped Jesus. Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment, so that those who do not see may see, and those who do see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees near him heard this and said to him, Surely we are not blind, are we? Jesus said to them, if you, were born, if you were blind, you would not have sinned. But now that you say, we see, your sin remains. This is the good news of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. <clears throat> All right, I see some things going on in my screen. I'm just going to make sure everybody's okay. I see a couple people that had dropped off, trying to get you guys back in here. Bear with me just a moment. Okay. Well, this, is, this is such a, a strange time, isn't it? Uh, Uncharted waters. We, we've never done anything like this before, and the church today is having to be creative and trying being adaptive and yet also being faithful to who we are, not only as Lutherans in our communities, but as Jesus' hands and feet, his faithful disciples in the world today. It's it's overwhelming and we struggle and we're being um we're having to change our our way of life and our schedules and and what we can do safely and what we shouldn't do and and it's hard and yet through the gifts of our lord and the gifts of technology I'm, i give thanks to god because we can still gather together in this way as Christ Church, being faithful to God's word and to the sacraments and being faithful to each other. So I give thanks to God for this opportunity to gather together. I know it's not ideal. Um, as Linda shared when we got on the call, uh, we missed our hugs. We missed the opportunity to be able to greet one another and be with one another. We miss the fellowship that we do so regularly at Amazing Grace and Crossroads. We miss the opportunities where we can get together and, and actually roll up our sleeves and serve our neighbors in need in a very tangible way. But I'm convinced that even in a hard time such as this, we, the, the ministry of the church does not pause. It does not go on. It does not end rather it, it goes on with great intention and great strength and it should go on because so many people in the world that are not people of faith or even if they are they're struggling with the times right now we're trying to make sense of what we should do and and how we can see god in the midst of all of this and it's a challenge it's also 
head spinning to think about how quickly things have changed. We were just discussing this morning at, you know, a week ago Thursday, we were sitting at a council meeting at Crossroads talking about su suggested changes that could be coming last Sunday to the ways we do communion and the ways we pass the peace and, and the way we worship together. And then Friday morning, waking up with the recommendation that now no more than 50 persons should gather. And then, you know, days later, as the, as the virus continues to spread and more cases are determined and open up as, as fatalities occur from this virus, now we see recommendations of 10 or fewer people together. It changes almost instantaneously, and that makes our heads spin because we're trying to make sense of all that is going on. I think about the reality of the world that we live in right now and how without faith, we would be like the blind man. John's gospel tells us that this man sat outside of the city, set out as a beggar, and people knew him. He was a landmark. He was a landmark because he sat there day in and day out, asking for help, begging for mercy. He could do nothing. He was a nobody in society at that time, just known as the beggar. I'm sure as people went to the market, they would give the directions by saying, you go toward the beggar and then you make a left. You go until you see the blind beggar, make a left and the market's just ahead. That's the kind of reality that he lived in. I'm sure his head was often spinning. He was often overwhelmed. He didn't know what to do. Each time he heard a new voice or each time he heard footsteps approaching, not knowing what the future would hold for him. It's kind of like the day and time that we live in, right? Until in John's gospel in the ninth chapter, Jesus shows up. Jesus shows up and encounters this blind man. One who was born blind from birth. And the first thing anybody can think of to ask Jesus is this. Who sinned, Jesus? This man or his parents? Someone in his family? Who sinned? Because this man who was born blind couldn't be just blind out of happenstance. The thought was of the time that if you had some kind of physical limitation, if there was a demon inside of you, or if something was quote unquote wrong with you, it was because you or someone in your family had sinned. And this was God's way of providing justice, pronouncing condemnation, judging you by giving you some kind of limitation or illness or demon as a measure of justice. Who sinned, they asked Jesus, this man or his parents that he was born blind? And Jesus is clear right from the beginning when we must understand the man didn't even ask for a healing. He didn't sit there and beg Jesus to be healed. Rather, he heard his voice. He heard his footsteps on the ground. And he heard this conversation that was going on around him about sin and about judgment. And Jesus is clear. When this man's world was spinning and he didn't know what the future might hold for him, Jesus pronounced a word of absolution, a word of mercy, a word of salvation. No one sinned here, Jesus says, this man nor his parents. Rather, he is blind so that God's works, that God's love, that God's mercy and grace might be revealed through him. Wow. Wow. When our world is spinning, when we don't know what the future might hold, 
when we're in need of healing ourselves, our God is a God who shows up and not only works to heal us, but gives us a measure of grace and mercy by saying, God loves you still, and God is working through you still, even in your current situation or circumstance, even as the world is completely in disarray over coronavirus, even when we're fearful of our jobs, fearful of our schedules, fearful for our families, even though our head is spinning and we're so uncertain as to what the future might hold for us, God is with us and God's works of justice and grace and mercy will work through us and we will be revealed through us. Then Jesus spits on the ground gathers the saliva, which is now mud together, and wipes it on the man's eyes and says to him, get up and go to the pool of Siloam and wash. Wash. So the man does. And just as he comes up out of the water, he is able to see for the very first time in his life the water that Jesus gives him in the pool of Siloam, the water that Jesus directs him to, gives him clarity and sight, gives him a renewed sense of life and purpose. And it's an amazing story. It's an amazing miracle. Because what happens next is this conversation and really this argument, and, and part of it has some elements of comedic relief in it even, as to how in the world this could have happened. How in the world could a man who did this on the Sabbath day, which by the law equates him to be a sinner, how could a man give someone sight? And so they send him first to the Pharisees, and they ask him these questions. And he tells them, this one named Jesus, he spat on the ground and made mud and told me to go wash and now I can see. Then the Jews, and they don't believe him either. And then the Jews finally go to his parents. And they say, is this your boy? Is this the one that was blind? Yes, his parents said, this is our son. But we don't know how this happened. You need to ask him. He's a big boy. He can talk for himself. The Jews do not like this whole situation, and they end, up, they end up kicking the man out of the synagogue, just as they had promised. Once again, his life is in a whirlwind. He is not able to go to his church. He is not able to be with his people, just like we're not able to. His head is spinning. He doesn't know what the future will hold for him. And just like life has always been, he is viewed as the outcast. And then what happens again, my dear sisters and brothers? Jesus shows up again. Are you seeing the cycle? <laughs> Jesus shows up again and has another encounter with this man who used to be blind and now he has his sight. And Jesus says, do you know who the Son of Man is? And I love his response because this man who now has his sight, who can see everything in the world, all of the colors, all of the textures, all of the people, he doesn't say, show him to me so that I can see him. Rather, this man says, tell me about him. Let me use my ears. Let me use my sense of hearing to learn about the Son of Man so that I can believe. 
this man goes back to what is most comfortable to him in using his sense of hearing to know who the Son of Man is. Jesus tells him, well, I'm he. The one who's speaking to you. I am the Son of Man. And we see this blindness that this man has had all of his life just melt away. The blindness to the world, the spiritual blindness that we might even have, the fear and the worry and the anxiety of all of what's ahead of us melting away for this man as he comes to belief in the Son of Man. And Jesus says that he comes... He comes to give this kind of sight to the blind. He comes to provide relief for the worrisome and the anxious and the fearful. He comes again and again as our world is spinning out of control. Our life is frazzled. Jesus encounters us again and again with the promise that through him and because of him, we are also invited to water, to constantly wash and be renewed so that we can regain our sight, so that we can see the goodness of God, so that we can see the promise of salvation from God. My brothers and sisters in Christ, we were once invited to the water to wash. In our, in our holy baptism, God invited us to wash so that we could see. And each and every time as our world and our life spins out of control, as we sit like the beggar and we become a landmark, as we don't know what the future holds for us, and yes, as we're even kicked out of our own church buildings, Jesus shows up again and again with a great promise. I come to wash you over and over and over again so that you might have sight, so that you can see clearly the promise from God that God loves you, that God is always with you, and that God will provide clarity for your life, that God will provide clarity and a promise of everlasting life and salvation that God's presence will clearly be with you even as your world is spinning, even as you don't know what the future holds. My brothers and sisters in Christ, these are difficult times that we live in. Let us always know that even though we suffer, that even though we, like the blind man, sometimes seem to lose our senses. Our world spins out of control. Our life is rearranged. And yes, we cannot even gather together as a church family in physical form. Jesus shows up again and again and again in our life, in our ministry, in our life of church. And he provides sight for us. He gives us that promise of sight so that we can always see the true love of God through Christ Jesus. Amen. I got to tell you, before we continue, it's so hard to preach to a computer screen. It doesn't nod its head. It doesn't wave its arms. It doesn't scream and shout. It doesn't do any of that. So um, it's hard to do that. And... Uh, but I hope, uh, I hope you're still able to receive a message from God's word, even as you're looking at your phones, your tablets, and your computer screens. Um, may God continue to bless you.
In ancient and modern times, Lent has been the time for instruction of candidates preparing for their baptism at the Easter Vigil. At the same time, the whole church anticipates Easter through acts of repentance and spiritual renewal. It is therefore appropriate that we review the basics of our faith during these Sundays in Lent, so that we all might be renewed by our baptismal covenants and made ready for the celebration of Easter. What is Holy Communion? Holy Communion is the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, given with bread and wine, instituted by Christ himself for us to eat and drink. What benefits do we receive from this sacrament? The benefits of this sacrament are pointed out by the words given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sin. These words assure us that in the sacrament we receive forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation. For where there is forgiveness of sins, there is also life and salvation. How can eating and drinking do all this? It is not eating and drinking that does this, but the words given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. These words, along with eating and drinking, are the main thing in the sacrament. And whoever believes these words has exactly what they say, forgiveness of sins. When is a person rightly prepared to receive this sacrament? Fasting and other outward preparations serve a good purpose. However, that person is well prepared and worthy who believes these words given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sin. But anyone who does not believe these words or doubts them is neither prepared nor worthy, for the words for you require simply a believing heart. Our Redeemer Jesus healed many as a sign of the reign of God come near, and he sent the disciples to continue this work of healing with prayer, the laying on of hands, and anointing. In the name of Christ, the great healer and reconciler of the world, we now entrust to God all who are in need of healing. We pray. Merciful God, you sent your Son to be our peace. Help all those who suffer any pain or grief, hopelessness or anxiety. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Compassionate God, the strength of those who suffer, bring hope and peace to all who are in mental, physical, or spiritual distress. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of peace and reconciliation, bring an end to the sickness of the world, especially violence, war, and the isms that divide and harm us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Holy God, your Son prayed that your people may be one. May the gift of baptism be a power for healing the church's brokenness and bless all efforts for renewal and Christian unity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, mend broken relationships and bring peace to our families our congregations, communities, and the world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Spirit of comfort and hope, we pray for those we personally know in need of healing, whom we now name aloud or in the silence of our hearts.
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our peace and our strength, we pray for our nation and the world as we face new uncertainties around coronavirus. Protect the most vulnerable among us, especially all who are currently sick or in isolation. Grant wisdom, patience, and clarity to healthcare workers, especially as their work caring for others puts them at great risk. Guide us as we consider how best to prepare and to respond in our families, congregations, workplaces, and communities. Give us courage to face these days not with fear, but with compassion, concern, and acts of service, trusting that you abide with us always. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. At this time, I want to invite you um, to remain faithful to the, uh, the mission and the ministry of the church by hopping on um, our, our uh, web pages, amazinggracelutheran.church or crossroadslutheran.church. Uh, you can make a gift online there to support the, the mission and ministry of the churches. Also, uh, you can mail in your tithes and offerings. Uh, you can also uh, bring them when you uh, come to communion today. Uh, we'll have the offering plates set out, and you're welcome to bring those and give the gifts to the Lord uh, then. Uh, also, I wanted to share, too, Amazing Grace ha has been in the midst of a uh, stewardship appeal, uh, God's, amaz uh, God's Amazing Grace for All, and we, uh, we we're still collecting some, we're still receiving some uh, pledge cards, some statements of intent. So if you have not yet had an opportunity to either mail that in or bring that to the church, uh, you're welcome to do so. Uh, if, if you're coming to, the, to bring it by the church or an offering by the church, I ask that you just please uh, check in with the church office either by email or giving Wendy a call and we'll make sure someone is there to receive it. Uh, but by and large, we'd like uh, either online giving or uh, you can bring it during communion. Uh, just to keep everyone safe and healthy, we would rather do that. If you look on the screen right now, you can see on our uh, web page at the top right, there's a giving tab. Uh, that takes you to our giving page where it tells you all the different ways you can uh, give to the mission and ministry of the church. At the very bottom of that page, it gives instruction for online giving options. And you can see the link there. It says click here. That takes you over into our Tithely page, which is our uh, online platform for giving. Uh, you just fill in the uh, pertinent information. Uh, and then you can, you can either set up an automated giving account if you would like to do that, if you'd like to have that come out regularly. Um, and you can click submit. It's pretty easy. Uh, I have great confidence that if you can log in to Zoom and worship in this way, you can do online giving. Um, it's, uh, it's an easy platform, easy way to, to be able to support the ministry of the church. So thanks so much uh, for doing that. Let us pray. We've got a, I see we've got a chat too. Can you check that? Uh, so the question is, is there a way to give dedicated funds uh, right now? I'm not sure I understand. Uh, uh, I think the question might be for designated funds. Um, if you would like your funds, your donation designated in any particular way, there's a, if you see on the screen there, there's a note down about three quarters of the way down the page that says memo note. Um, you can type in whatever you would like there to be able to designate your offerings. Um, also, if you look toward the top right-hand corner, there's a give to field, 
if you click on that, there's a diff there's a couple different options that are just kind of standard options uh, to be able to designate your offerings. Um, the uh, so that's both at Amazing Grace and Crossroads. You can see that um, the note memo field would be able to to further allow you to explain how you would like um, your gifts designated. Uh, otherwise, I would encourage. Um, I would encourage you to uh, check out the uh, ELCA Disaster Relief. I know they have uh, gifts that are ongoing or accounts that are ongoing to be able to support, um, to be able to support local or not local, but be able to support ministries that are fighting uh, the coronavirus and uh, working to uh, get our world back to normal. Um, uh, but those are options that we have right now. If you have another idea or a way that uh, funds can be directed, uh, whatever the idea may be, if you'll just send me an email or give me a call, I'd love to hear your idea. And we can, um, we can definitely uh, direct those offerings in the way that you wish. I see another question about sermon notes. Um, you know, oh, Wendy's answering that. Wendy's going to send the document uh, for sermon notes. Um, this, this worship is also being recorded so that we can share it with our church members who were not able to be online um, or find Zoom too difficult to manage. Um, that, that way they can watch the link later. We'll have, have this worship service out for everyone. So, um, yeah, Bryce, I see your comment too. There, I've seen a couple of different... Uh, post on social media about where folks can send food or help for that. Um, I know that our local helping agencies, Common Heart and in Indian Trail in Union County, North Carolina, and then Hope in Lancaster in Lancaster County, South Carolina, they're both already feeling great effects from uh, the coronavirus uh, pandemic. So um, they, they need your, your support and they need the support of the churches. We are walking hand in hand with them to try to figure out how we can support those local ministries uh, where people are depending on them for uh, basic necessities of food and shelter and water and the like. Um, so we'll keep, keep information out there. We did have a senior citizens mobile food pantry in the parking lot of Crossroads this past week uh, to get food out to seniors who are uh, suffering at this time, who do not have enough food. Um, Common Heart, I know, has done a lot of different uh, food drives in the past week to help get uh, food to the hungry. And then also, as Bryce mentioned in the comment, the Blessing Box is another way at Amazing Grace. The Blessing Box is another way to help, um, to help with hunger in our community. So if you have uh, extra food or if you're at the store and you see uh, a coveted box of pasta or or something like that and uh, you can grab it uh, as an extra uh, the blessing box will be a great place to, to donate those in-kind gifts thanks for the question that's awesome now let us pray God, our provider, you have not fed us with bread alone, but with words of grace and life. Bless us and these your gifts, which we receive from your bounty, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As we prepare to receive the sacrament this afternoon at both Amazing Grace and Crossroads, uh, we uh, go through the communion liturgy. Uh, and ask God's blessings and consecration over the elements of bread and wine. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right to give him our thanks and praise. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus gathered with his disciples in an upper room. He took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to them, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. 
shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord, teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. Holy God, speaking, spoken, and inspiring, bless you, unbind you, and send you in love and peace. Amen. Marked with the cross of Christ, let us go forth to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.